Jared Pullen, fronosphoto.com, and I'm here with Steve and Duncan of Pixel Stick as we wait for, wait for it, $400,000 to tick off uh, on this uh, Pixel Stick. So how are you guys doing? Good, good. good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. So we've seen a lot about this. Uh, obviously, the Kickstarter's been going for a couple days now. Talk about the idea, Pixel Stick. Where did it come from? How are you making this happen? What's up? Uh, you know, for the last four or five years, I've been kind of going around the world shooting time lapse, uh, and always been interested in light painting, and was always looking for a way to kind of smash those two things together, um, and doing it in a way that was sort of high fidelity. And we never had that ability, and so there's always in the back of my mind, like, how do I get frames of animation into my time lapse? Uh, so it was always on the back burner a little bit, and then about a year and a half ago, really started working at it. And from then it was, you know, it started pretty low fidelity and just continued to get better and better until uh, Pixel Stick you see today, which is, you know, you can do photo real, you can do abstract. It's, it's, I mean, it still amazes us. I'll put it that way. Yeah. So this is your second Kickstarter, correct? Yep. Yeah, that's right. We had one in uh, May of 2012 uh, called Remy. It was a lucid dreaming mask. And how that, that turned out very well, I think. That also turned out very well, yes. Um, yeah. What have you learned from that experience that you've taken into this one doing another Kickstarter? A, a lot. Tons, um, yeah. I mean, our skill set has expanded considerably in terms of uh, you know, just general engineering and, and programming and, and also managing large product projects and, uh, you know, keeping in communication with a large group of people who, you know, want to know what's going on on a more or less constant basis. So, yeah, so let's, yeah. Let, let's look at this. Like, it's one thing for a photographer to have an idea, but it's another thing to be able to take that idea and bring it to fruition. What, how did you, how'd you make this happen? Uh, you know, I, I started about three or four years ago building motion control time-lapse rigs. So once I started learning to do that and it, you know, you start to get into the electronics world, all of a sudden all of these doors open for the ideas that you had on a napkin or at the bar now you can realize them. Uh, so Pixel Stick was definitely, Remy was one of those, Pixel Stick was one of those where we just started working at it. And the first prototype is, you know, only I could go out and use it and I had to know how to configure it and all that. And uh, we definitely, this is something we learned on Remy, you got to take that product, which is for one guy or two guys, and make it so that anybody could pick it up and use it. So we really focused on um, taking the Pixel Stick and, and rounding off kind of the rough edges and making it sturdy, making it, uh, accessible, so it definitely started though from you know a couple circuit boards, a hacked together prototype, uh, and then you just keep banging away at it. So, and it's, yeah, sorry, God. I was going to say, how how much personal money have you invested into getting it off the ground? Well, the the great thing is that Pixel Stick wouldn't be where it is today without Remy because Remy helped to bankroll the early Pixel Stick development. Uh, I don't know how much money off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, quite a bit. The, the pixel stick that's behind us, the prototype, is absolutely uh, a couple thousand dollars worth of of parts and money because everything's custom and it's a one-off. Um, sure. And so that's where the Kickstarter comes in. You know, we obviously can't sell it for a couple thousand dollars, or we could, but we'd sell ten. So uh, with all the support, then we get to go into mass production and, and all that cost comes down. But yeah, quite a bit of money, probably quite a bit more in man hours. Sure. Uh, no, yeah, it's just it's it's again fascinating, and I talk about this anytime there's a great Kickstarter out there that it that you are, is it just the two of you? Yeah, yeah, yep. two men. So to be able to have an idea, work with a friend of yours, be able to create something, and then have a place to go online to put it and create a business out of it, and just watch it go global is is just insanity at this point. And it and it it's great. The world we live in today for this type of thing is just amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole new world because uh, a lot of these things, you know, probably wouldn't be considered, the markets wouldn't be considered big enough uh, to get any sort of large investment to create something. So to be able to bring it to a group of people who are potentially interested in it and, and get such a great reception and, and then go on to make something that, you know, you're proud of and, and people are happy to receive. It's yeah, just, I mean, you can't pitch a room full of people on a light painting magical wand that's going to do all this. I mean, it's just something that you either have to realize it yourself and you know when you try and explain to people and they don't get it you just ignore them or uh, or it just never gets made so that's i mean that's a big kickstarter thing so many things that you would never dream of coming to market do because they're the project of one or two people who who care about it you know 
Well, yeah, I have another Kickstarter in my hand right now. It's the Minerki. For anybody at home that could see it, it's a it's a turkey on one side and a, men- and a menorah on the other because Hanukkah and th- and Thanksgiving fall on the fir- on the same date for the first time in like three hundred years and the last time for the next three hundred years. So some nine year old came up with that idea. Nice. Wait. And, so uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that after. But um, so the the thing that fascinates me again is now how do you deal with the manufacturers? How did you get those doors open to say hey? You know, we need this, this, and this. You, a, a lot of it is sort of banking on the fact, again, that, that Remy was such a success. Now, all of a sudden, people take us seriously. And that's, you know, they're always going to Google you and find out who you are. And so when they, they pop back on a project that was um, sort of one that, that they might have laughed off, but then it hit. You know, when I tell them we're doing this thing and it's going to be launched on Kickstarter, and then they can't just roll their eyes and and kind of shoo us out the door. So we had some clout that way. And the other stuff is, you know, you just got to, you got to pay more and get people to make stuff, uh, you know, as one offs and, and there's always a premium there, but, yeah. uh, the, the world's changed. Even in the last three years, people are a lot more receptive to dealing with crowdfunded smaller projects, I think. Yeah. But we did, I mean, when we, with the first go around, we had lots of hangups and non-returned emails and, and all of that sort of thing yeah. for people who were just like, well, these guys, are small potatoes. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know anything. Um, so to getting, getting your foot in the door is a little bit difficult, but, uh, you, you learn as you go and and kind of in some ways fake it till you make it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's fascinating. I watched the, really the video that you made, there's nothing else you need to do other than show somebody that video, which grabs them at the forefront. Cause I, I was waiting for the, well, how the hell did you do this? And it finally does get there in the video. And it's like, Oh snap, you can, you can do this. And, and I'm sure there's a million things that, people are going to think of doing that you guys never thought about using it for. Absolutely. Exactly. That's that's what we're really waiting for. I mean, no matter how good you are with a tool or a camera or something, there's always people who are more sure. creative and better and, and that's like people are going to blow it open. It'll be it'll be great. Yep. Just following the footsteps of uh of doing what um uh, GoPro does and just keep promoting everybody that that throws theirs out there. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're light painting uh, enthusiasts, I guess you could say, but we're certainly not experts. There's people out there that have been doing amazing things for years and years, and when they get a pixel stick into their hands, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be happily show yeah. their work around. And, you know, even not light painters, I mean, artists, the, the thing that's cool is the bar to get involved with pixel stick is so much lower, I think, and you get such higher quality results that people who just want to do performance art or have a, a different kind of way of expressing themselves will pick it up and pick up a camera and go to town and they won't have to be like, I'm a light painter and this is what I do. It's, it's just, it'll be a much easier uh, leap into that, that genre, I think. Yep. Sure. Even people with point and shoots. I mean, that's easy. Yeah. Pencil sticks easy for anyone. So. All right, guys. Well, I uh, wish you continued success with this. Uh, I can't wait till we get our hands on one to play with. Uh, I haven't done much light painting myself, but this is something that would be fun to play with. Cool. Great. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Good luck. Let me hit the refresh button. Let's see if we've we've hit the uh, target. Not yet, but there's still 30 days to go. So if you want to pick up a pixel stick, you can follow the links, pick one up, and uh, then it could be yours. And that is it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.